On June 27, 1988, 21-year-old Parisian resident Odile Miroir was making her usual evening commute to pick up her children from school. She boarded a commuter train inbound to Paris Gare de Lyon, one of the largest train stations in France and one of the busiest in Paris. Little did she know that this trip would leave a massive impact on French rail travel. Boarding this train in the second carriage, she was expected to travel to Vert de Maison station, just a few stops from Gare de Lyon. The actions of Odile would become a pivotal point, but still one of numerous in a disaster that would ultimately claim the lives of 56 people. The Gare de Lyon rail disaster turned what was a normal Monday evening into pure devastation. How did this happen? Just what was going on on board that train? The railways in France are run by a state-owned company, SNCF. This company runs everything from the fast TGV trains all the way down to the commuter trains that run in and out of major cities. As you'd expect, Paris is a massive hub for the country's rail travel. It is pretty much the central focal point for rail in the country. Many lines terminate at one of a number of stations across the city. One of those stations is Gare de Lyon. Gare de Lyon, as its name may suggest, is the terminus for the railway that heads south of Paris, terminating at the city of Lyon. Traveling out of Paris around 40 kilometers, a suburban commuter train runs between Paris and Milan, just south of the French capital. It's part of a wider network called the Regional Express Network, known to commuters as the RER. In the evening of Monday, June 27, 1988, a train departed Melun for its evening service back to Paris, terminating at Gare de Lyon. At the controls of the train that evening was 42-year-old Daniel Solin. He had been a train driver at SNCF for many years, first joining the company when he was a teenager. He knew the route well. That evening, he was driving an eight-car electric multiple unit train, or EMU for short. EMUs are popular for this type of commuter service. Many countries all over the world use something similar to this. At this time on these routes, SNCF used what they called a Class Z 5300. Typically, the trains comprised of four cars. The eight-car formation, as was used in this case, was simply two four-car trains connected together. It needs to be noted before continuing with the video. For the simulated reconstruction used here, a stand-in model has been picked, as the Z5300 has never been replicated in the train simulator. The time was after 6 p.m. Daniel Solin was projected to reach Gare de Lyon on time. Driver Solin was working with a train conductor by the name of Jean-Charles Bovy, also a man who had many years on the French railways. On the line the two men were working that evening, SNCF had introduced an amended summer schedule. This particular train was expected to pass through Vert de Maison station without stopping. Incidentally, the station that one passenger seated in the second car was planning to use, Odile Miroir. Vert de Maisons was the third to last station before Gare de Lyon. As this train approached this station, it did begin slowing down, but the driver had no intention to stop. Odile Miroir noticed the train was not stopping at the station. She, along with many other Parisians, was still adjusting to the new summer timetable. Panicked, she leapt from her seat and pulled an emergency brake lever. As the brake is supposed to do, it applies full braking power to the train and the eight cars come to a standstill at the station. Odile Miroir left the train and disappeared. Though it was a rather well-timed action, it would prove to be the initial starting point of the disaster. To understand why, we need to delve deeper into this train's braking mechanics. Most trains, like this one, have brakes that are applied by air. In this case, the train's engine creates compressed air that is connected to the wheel brakes all across the train. Each of the train's eight cars is fed air through a unit, one per carriage. This is also linked up to a pipe that spans the entire length of the train. A valve on the engine car opens and closes the pipe. If it is open, the train can get all the air it needs to apply the brakes. If it's closed, 
braking power is substantially limited to just the car that contains the air, which would be the front engine car. When a train driver wants to apply brakes, usually there are multiple steps of braking power that can be applied. If a passenger pulls the emergency brake, it overrides the driver's own controls and the train will come to a stop, as was what happened here. When this train came to its stop, it was required that an emergency override switch be activated manually by either the driver or the guard. It's located between cars 1 and 2. Train guard Bovi attempted to pull the handle but struggled. Driver Solin also tried to move the handle and he too found it difficult, but eventually they did get it to move. It is critical to note that to gain leverage and grip over moving this stubborn handle, he placed his hand on the other handle which controls the airflow valve for the train's brakes. He inadvertently shifted it to the closed position. He did manage to pull the emergency brake handle and supposedly to his knowledge, the brakes were reset. It was discovered once he reached the driver's cab that the brakes were still applied. As a failsafe measure that was installed on this train, because the main brake pipe valve had now been shut, every brake on the train was now stuck in the applied position. This is to prevent the train from leaving without the air needed to apply the brakes. The seven cars trailing behind the engine car need to have their brakes repressurized. This can't be done because the air supply from the engine car has been halted from the closing of the valve. Neither the driver nor the guard understand that this has happened. They then take the time to disarm all the brakes on the train manually. We need to understand that the train was now substantially delayed in its journey. Having been stuck for some time at the Vera de Masson station, many passengers reluctantly left the train also, making their own way to their destination. Those who stayed on resigned themselves to a delayed arrival. Driver Solin was wanting to leave to try and claw back any time on the schedule he could. Noticing that his brakes were still applied to seven of the eight cars, he did not call for maintenance help. Had he done so, engineers may have discovered the issue plaguing the train. Instead, he and the guard went to shut off the brakes manually. At just after 7pm, the train leaves Vert de Maisons to continue its journey to central Paris. To emphasize, what has just happened is that the air supply that powers the brakes in seven of the eight train cars has been shut off inadvertently. The failsafe brake locking system has been manually overridden and the brakes on those cars will no longer function from the lack of air supply, and the driver has just pulled away from the station. Thinking that nothing was amiss, Daniel Solin accelerated his train up to the speed limit. He didn't know at the time that he had just 12% of his usual braking power. To make up even more time as the train was now 26 minutes behind schedule, controllers ordered the driver to not stop at the next station, Maison Alfort, a station the train was supposed to visit on this new timetable. Solin drives through the station, the brakes never applied. Passing through that final station, we should now direct our attention to Gare de Lyon. Located at one of the underground platforms, specifically what was labelled as Platform 2, was another SNCF commuter train. The four-car train was expected to leave Gare de Lyon for a trip back out to Melun at 7.04pm that evening, but also was delayed. In the cab who was meant to drive the train was a man by the name of André Tongui. The train was signalled to go, but he couldn't at that time. The trains require two people to operate a driver and a guard. His guard had not showed up on time, so the train was stuck there. As that train ran more behind schedule, more passengers continued to board. As just mentioned, this was an underground section of Gare de Lyon. The main station is on the ground level. Suburban trains heading to the underground platforms need to pass down a roughly 4 degree gradient just before pulling into the station. The inbound, now runaway train was expected to use Platform 2, the same platform as the outbound train currently sat there at the station. At this time, the two trains are on the same track. In other words, in this state, the runaway train is on a collision course. 
However, there are a set of points just before trains enter Gare de Lyon. We'll come back to this shortly. When Daniel Solin inevitably saw the yellow signal to slow down, he quickly realized that his brakes were not working as they were supposed to. Over the next few moments, he would substantially slow the train down with the little braking power the train did have, but this proved useless once the train entered that gradient. It began picking up speed again. Guard Bovee began looking for a handbrake that was somewhere on the train, but he would never find it. The time was 7.07, .07, when the driver desperately radioed to signalers and controllers that his brakes were defective and couldn't slow down. He did not identify who he was or which train specifically that was in distress. He pushed an alarm that sent a siren to the nearby control center via the radios and all other trains on the network. Those managing the railways turned every signal to red and trains across the network came to a standstill. This included the delayed train at Gare de Lyon. The train's guard had turned up and they were about to leave. Now they were stuck once again. The signal had turned red. Feeling he was unable to do much more from the train's cab, driver Solin left the front of the train and began making his way down the coaches getting passengers away from the front of the train. As it would turn out, controllers attempted to contact the train via the radios but no one answered. The driver had already left the cab empty. Solin's efforts meant that every passenger was in the rear of the train. The now panicked occupants of the runaway braced for collision. When the network was shut down, controllers go through a checklist that locked all railway points in their current position. The points on that stretch of track between the two trains had not yet been changed. They were now locked. A collision was now guaranteed. At Gare de Lyon, some passengers, frustrated with their delayed train, began to leave. In the train's cab, driver André Tongui catches the first glimpse of the one thing no train driver ever wants to see, the lights of an oncoming train. It showed no sign of stopping and was coming straight for him. We need to pause here and understand that in this situation, André Tongui had two options. As the driver of the train, he did have the time to leave the train and save his life. Or he could stay on the train and warn passengers of the oncoming danger. He chose the latter. He picked up the intercom and began ordering his passengers to immediately evacuate the train. He would stay on the intercom repeating his message until disaster, saving dozens of lives whilst sacrificing his own. At roughly 10 past 7, the runaway train collided with the stationary train on underground platform 2 at Gare de Lyon. 56 people had been killed in the crash, dozens more injured with wounds ranging from minor to life-threatening. Rescue workers quickly found that the mangled wreckage of the two trains had been what is called telescoped. The front car of the stationary train was completely obliterated. Some of those who survived the crash but trapped in the wreckage needed limb amputation at the scene to be saved. Among the dead was train driver André Tongui. For his efforts and quick thinking that evening, he is remembered as a hero among railway people across the world. As you'd expect, the disaster became the talk of the entire country of France. For the French, the publicly run railway is a source of national pride. The Gare de Lyon crash was the deadliest rail disaster to occur in France in over 50 years. Investigators quickly learned of the emergency brake being activated by a passenger before the crash. This was circulated through French media and Odile Miroir came forward. The investigation also uncovered that train driver Daniel Solin never took advantage of an additional electronic braking system that is operated from the cab. He forgot it was there. It's not something that drivers of this train used all that often. In the aftermath, train driver Daniel Solin, passenger Odile Miroir, and one controller did face criminal charges. The train driver was sentenced to four years in prison, but only served six months for manslaughter. There was a lot of criticism from the public and media towards SNCF. 
the company never bared any responsibility for the disaster. Though they did overhaul their driver training and made modifications to trains to phase out external manual brake valves. In the years after, the Z5300 trains continued to serve on the railways going in and out of Paris. Since 2018, they have been retired. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it to be interesting, be sure to leave a like and make sure to be subscribed as there is always a new video every Saturday. There were certainly some challenges during the making of this week's video. I actually fell ill during the production of it, but I am feeling much better right now. Also, we had to sort of break a standard rule of the channel to bring you this one. I wish the appropriate train was in the simulator. I always try and strive for that level of accuracy, but I always wanted to make this video and it's just never going to happen. So a compromise needed to be made. Anyway, it's that time of the week where I take a moment to thank my patrons over on Patreon for their incredible support to the channel. Their names are scrolling on the screen right now. So if you see your name here, a big thank you to you. Shout out this week to Ezra Gonzalez, who actually increased their pledge to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you want to support the channel further, consider joining the Disaster Breakdown Patreon from just £1 per month, and the link to that will be in the pinned comment below. All patrons get early access to all new content 48 hours before it goes out publicly on YouTube. With all that said, thank you all so much for watching. If you want to follow my personal Twitter, that will be linked in this video's description. Have a great day and I will see you next weekend. Goodbye.